it's official Photoscape X is alive on Photoscape X website they just listed their new update it's Photoscape X 4.2 and I'm gonna go through all of it today I'm very excited I thought Photoscape X was basically dead but in fact it's alive so let's hop into it here so we've got the Photoscape X website pulled up here and we're going to hop over to the history page and on the history page they have a list of what they are soon to add to Photoscape X this was posted just yesterday big shout out to the Facebook Photoscape X group for being right on top of it posting saying hey is this really the update we've been waiting for and we're gonna run through it today so let's begin so we've got uh, Photoscape X version 4.2 January 17th, 2022, uh, they waited like two over two years to put this update announcement out. But let's read about it first. It says that it is for Windows 10 and will be released very soon. So they're kind of just saying, hey, it's coming. And it looks like it's just for Windows 10 for now. Now, what I'm going to say here is that most likely they are working on getting everything going for Mac, but it looks like it's coming to Windows 10 first. So, unfortunate for everyone out there who's on Mac using Photoscape X. It's unfortunate to see them being exclusive here, but it's probably the easiest for them to get this side running first and then focus on Mac afterwards. Really a silly way of doing it, but that's how they're doing it. So, I've already looked through all of these different updates that they've talked about. So let me give you some of the notable things. First of all, some people are super excited because down here at the bottom, it says improved UI. Now the challenge is they've written that exact same thing in every update they've had. So whether the 2021 or the 2019 one, it says improved UI, improved UI, improved UI forever. They always use that phrase. So the question is, is this an overhaul? Is this some crazy new thing? Not, not from what it's saying right there, but we have a lot more to get to. So improved UI, that's there. Down at the very bottom, it says uh, fixed bugs. So that's nice. I've made videos about uh, definitely a bug in printing um, and printing or just saving out PDFs of your images that you're working on or your projects you're working on. I've come into issues with that. So I'm really happy to see that they have bugs fixed. Um, and then let's start at the top. We're just going to go through. Uh, first of all, you have the new object effects, the inner glow, the inner shadow, and the emboss. What I think is happening here is if we're in Photoscape X, uh, let me just pop out here. If we're in Photoscape X, uh, what I think they're talking about is let's say you have like an image that you're working on and you have an object in here. So like this fail um, uh, kind of text, this failed kind of a uh, transparent uh, photo that I have in here, what our graphic in here, what I think they're talking about is that you'll be able to select, you know, you can do gradients, you can do all sorts of different things in here, but I think they're going to have some different shadowing effects. Um, and I think it's going to be working on the image itself, kind of like on uh, iPhone when you take a photo or you're getting ready to take a photo and you're in like a portrait mode or something, you can adjust the lighting on the person's face. And I think in here, it's going to allow you to add some different uh, effects on the actual object itself. I think this is good. Um, but I don't know how much it's going to be effective uh, or like how big of a deal it's going to be. But it says for objects, so it doesn't necessarily say for images, which is unfortunate. But having more um, ability to make adjustments on objects, that's great. Um, next, we have uh, new image effects, and this is outline. This is a huge one that I've been wanting for a long time because so often... There'll be different YouTube videos and things where you want to outline maybe a face or a subject or something in your project. And either you got to draw a line around it or whatever, but you got different things you've got to work on. So here's an example. Let's say 
I want to draw a border around my face here. Unfortunately, it's very hard to do that. You know, you can add a shadow and you can add the shadow as whatever color you want, but that's not really a border, like a perfect border that you might would uh, that some people might draw. But if they add a border option or an outline option there, I think that would be super great. But that would be kind of another tab that they're going to another set uh, thing that you're able to select down here to add uh, outline. So I'm pumped about that. I think that's super awesome um, and will be very helpful for people who are making graphics, who are making presentations, who are making like YouTube thumbnails, things like that. Next, we have added background. Uh, fill, color, mask options to image and sticker objects. So, um, so added background, fill, color, mask options to image and sticker objects. You know, it's kind of tough to know exactly what that would look like. But let's say you add an image into uh, your project that you're working on. Um, so if you're adding that in, you'll hopefully have some of these different things they have. Um, now it's kind of tough though, cause it's like to image and sticker objects. Um, now here's the mask options. This is, this might be an interesting one. Mask options on an image. So you're working on an image and allegedly there's going to be some kind of, well, overlay and masks is already here. And, yeah, because you can do different stuff. Is this? Uh, it's just saying more options. So maybe there's just more options you're able to do with this stuff. It's a welcome thing, but it doesn't sound like it's an overhaul. It doesn't sound like it's a big change. So next, added mask option to the color and film effects. Um, so over here with the different uh, effects, so let's uh, just merge all these layers super quick for you guys. If we are in the color tab, they're saying there's some kind of mask effect that you're able to utilize more than what you already have. Then over here in the film effect, when you are going and selecting different film effects, you can allegedly mask certain parts of the image and only have it affect certain parts. It's nice to have more of those options available, but not a huge deal in my opinion. So added close tab to the collage. This is just kind of a silly thing. In the collage tab, there's not really a close. Like if you right click, um, is there a close at all? Yeah, it's kind of tough, but yeah, it just got a little funky and stuff. And sometimes it got confusing, but, um, I think you could delete out of it. How would you restart? Nonetheless, there'll be a close tab in there, which is really helpful. Okay. Next we have the added merge layers to a, f to editor tab, this, uh, merge selected layers to editor tab. I don't see this as a big change in Photoscape X. I think all that it's doing is let's say you're working on a project, you have a lot of different tabs and things. There is, when you're in the insert tab, you're able to go through and select and grab these different things. And there's always this layers button here where you're able to click this, go over and merge all the layers together, making it just one image instead of a bunch of different pieces. The thing is, I think what they're doing is over here in the editor tab, they're just gonna still allow you to push the button. I don't see this as a major change, uh, not a huge overhaul. It's just a nice to have button added in. So you have that. You have uh, font favorites. I think this is really nice, just a time saving thing. So for me, if I've downloaded a certain font and I want to use it and it's like, okay, it starts with a P and it's down there. It's just it's like popping uh, extra bold. I like uh, this one. So like, let's say you have a certain one that you really like, you can select that one, but you could also note it as a favorite so you can jump straight to it. And you can have a list of favorites that you like to hop between if you have some that you really love instead of having to cycle through all of these. So that's really good to have. Um, next you have this uh, WebP quality option. 
this is when you're saving the photo out you'll have this new uh, save this new export setting that you can use but after, as I looked it up it's actually not that incredible it's supposed to be helpful in some circumstances but for me I don't see a big use for it but it's nice to have that option for some people who can make use of it all right so then they added some different patterns which are going to be nice they added a hundred and eighty flower stickers I don't know why they spent the time to do that but those are just more options you have access to next you have 469 more pixel stickers once again I'm gonna have to make a whole video about stickers oh boy this will be fun but yeah there's tons of stickers in here that you can utilize like there's an exclamation point sticker and you could put it someplace and they have different styles and different designs and all sorts of stuff there's not really a great way to like search through them is there a favorites button to like hit favorite I don't think there's a favorites button there's these pixelated like people or all this it looks cool I think they're actually uh, they actually are scalable where they don't get blurry the larger you nope they they are they're um, vector it looks like they're vector style yeah very fun so you can definitely utilize these stickers but I don't see that as a huge change for people anything super amazing uh, that's gonna like revolutionize and like say oh you have to use photoscape X because they're stickers all right now uh, we had selecting and editing multiple objects this is one that's really interesting. I want to see how they execute this. But when you're selecting and editing multiple objects, it's kind of tough. Because is it the fact that you're able to select like the overview text? And I'm able to select this affinity photos text. And I'm able to select my picture here. And like currently, you can select these. Like if you hold down control, you're able to select multiple ones and like move them around. You're able to duplicate them. You're able to move them forward or backwards in your project. And you're able to do a couple other things over here. Um, you can even angle your objects and center them. Wow, that's kind of interesting. But the problem is you don't have a lot of flexibility over editing multiple images all at the same time. The thing is most people probably don't care about a, that kind of thing. Um, too heavily I don't think like it would be nice to be able to adjust my text both at the exact same time if I have them broken up into different text threads but um, what I would have loved to see would have been what I would love to see is the ability to um, you know edit an image let's say it's not the main background image but being able to edit this image here off to the side this picture of me being able to adjust it or edit it in a little bit in a little way like to say hey on this you know this is the background it's a white background it's stuck but saying hey is there a way for me to instead be able to click on this image and to make adjustments and to change things like change the saturation change um, if I want to add a certain effect onto it just to that effect and not have to pull it all the way out into a different Photoscape X window and put it back in. Okay, but that's just me. That's what I would love to see. But if they allow you to edit multiple objects, okay, that'll be great. I hope they execute on that more than how it's leading on or how it's written there. Then improved object effects, um, long shadow, overlays and masks, I would love to see them do more with overlays and masks. Uh, what would be really nice if if you could, you know, drop an object. But like for me, I'm thinking about a photo. Like if I could drop a photo in and then just mask out certain things without having to jump into the cutout tab and do different things. But if you know how to use the cutout tab pretty well and you use uh, different uh, copy to clipboard and pasting, it's pretty quick. Um, but maybe not as easy as I would like. Um, improved shadows and highlights filters. That's nice. So, what am I trying to say in all this stuff that I'm talking that we're looking at here today? 
uh, basically what I'm seeing is that Photoscape X is continuing to grow. It's continuing to live and they're adding new things to improve what Photoscape X is. You'll have some good features in here, some good ways to customize what you're doing. And I think it's really nice what they have uh, going for them with this new update. The thing is, it's not a major overhaul. I don't see anything crazy happening. Um, one th reason why is that they're not jumping a whole letter or a whole number. This is from, you know, uh, 4.11 to now 4.2. So it's just that incremental upgrade. It's not like version 5 or something like that. Incremental upgrade. It's nice to see that they're continuing to move forward with the project. Uh, big thank you to anyone who has actually bought Photoscape X Pro. I have. Many people have. But it helps the developers to continue to make more of this uh, software and to continue to grow it and make it what it can be. What I think Photoscape X should do if they're listening, I would really encourage them to be more open with their community and to let them know what they're doing, what they're working on, show us what's in the works, what their kind of roadmap is for the future. I'd love to see that stuff, and I'd be willing to put, uh, put tell more people to go out and try out Photoscape X, the pro version, and actually go ahead and buy that to be able to do more in Photoscape X. But for now, for me, the way that I my stance on it is say if you're totally new with photo editing but you want to get into it, you want to do more with it, you're intermediate or you're someone who just needs to be able to edit photos and do a little bit more tweaking than just what you can do on your phone or with just the built-in photo editor on your uh, on your computer that's come stock. Um, then I really encourage people to use Photoscape X. But if you're using it for a business, if you're using it for something where photo editing is a core thing that you do, really at that point, I would encourage people to say, hey, if you're making money and you're making money utilizing this software, um, either you fall in love with Photoscape X and you go and get the pro version because you just want to keep using Photoscape X or you jump to other softwares like Affinity Photo or Photoshop. Uh, Photoshop and Lightroom in tandem. Um, those are my two options for anyone who wants to go fa farther than that. But if you think Photoscape X is great, if you want to go with the Pro, that's awesome. Um, but just know that you know these updates, it's slow going. There's not a lot of communication. I really wish they'd do more communication because it would help us to be able to really recommend, help me to be able to recommend this so much more. But nonetheless, I'm happy to see these updates. I do wish they just went live with it right away but uh, I will be letting you guys know all about how these updates work out as soon as they go live thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one if you haven't watched my crash course 2022 Photoscape X video you definitely can do that get caught up with what's been going on and then hopefully see those new updates very soon so subscribe for that thank you so much and I'll see you all in the next one bye